Good morning. Justin. It's good to see you, Andy. Um, appreciate the question. The biggest thing for us was opening up a window to compete for a title. And I give credit to the ownership, um, the organization, the community, and the support that we've had over the last three years as we basically put every resource towards trying to accomplish that. And we fell short. So in the NBA life cycle, um, this was kind of a touch point for us to, to make a pivot. And to do that, we wanted to give the organization every opportunity to build the greatest base of flexibility, young players, and uh, assets going forward to make really good decisions so that we could reach the ceiling that we want to get to, and that's win a title here. Um, you know, as Danny has said, and we've said before that we have a plan for that. It's going to take a lot of work, um, but we're really excited about the base that we're starting from, um, especially with our new coach and the players that have come in. I know we'll talk a little bit about them as well, and just the opportunities that are going to be available going forward. So was there a point where you and Danny, um, was it like a light bulb that said, hey, you know, we kind of fell short with this, you know, proverbial era and we need to uh, either pivot or, or restart or was it just kind of a linear uh, decision between you guys and ownership and, um, you know, and did, you know, some events, you know, precipitate this, like, you know, Quinn stepping down uh, and, and moving on? Did that make it easier for you guys to, to kind of make this decision? I think, look, any sort of decisions that come that have happened in the off season, uh, we as a group always talk about them. Um, where our team finished at the end of the year uh, with our lack of cap space, really lack of upside, required us to be, get, be a trade team. And so obviously that takes a partner to do that. And when there were opportunities that came up, we as a group decided that this was in the best interest of the Jazz organization. And sh you know, slowly through that, you try to figure out what's the best combination of players that are still here, the opportunities going forward. And through those conversations, it just became very apparent with the, the value that we were able to return to the organization that this was the path that we needed to start on. Certainly, pre you know, as I said before, previous results you know, kind of told us who we were. And it wasn't just a one-year thing. This is a good three-year period that, you know, we won a lot of games, had a lot of success, but we were tapped out um, from a potential standpoint, and we needed to reset that. So those opportunities came this summer, and uh, we were able to take advantage of it and put some guys in some really competitive situations and then bring some players here that I think have a chance to go forward with us and, and uh, with Coach Hardy's program. When, when I came when I came in mid season, um, you know I had obviously followed the Jazz from the outside before I got here in December, um, but I wasn't sure how good the Jazz were going to be, and I was curious and optimistic. Um, but what I saw during the season was a group of players that really didn't believe in each other. Like the whole group, I think they liked each other even more than was reported. I think there was, um, but I'm not sure there was a belief that they, and so I, when we got to the playoffs, I thought, well, this is a team that's had some disappointing playoffs and maybe they're just waiting for the playoffs. And so I gave them that benefit of the doubt. And, um, but it was clear the team, you know, did not perform well in the playoffs again. And so I think that collectively that was just, you know, me coming in from the outside, but that was uh, a little bit what the view was internally even before, you know, I made those own assessments. But 
yeah, this was something that we discussed internally between all of us, and I think it was unanimous that this is these this was the direction we needed to go. Even though we're now less than you know a month out from training camp, Donovan gone, Rudy gone, Roy's gone. Is it fair to say that at this point you're still having conversations in terms of Mike Conley, Boyan Bogdanovich, Jordan Clarkson, veteran guys who might be of more use to you know a contending team than a rebuilding one? I'll say this, uh, Eric. I mean, it's our jobs to continue to have conversations every day on on our team. What I will say is that those veteran guys that you mentioned are really important to us here. I know the team has a chance to look very, very different than the previous iterations that they were on, but all of those guys are high character, leaders, um, people that uh, enjoy being here in Utah and uh, love the organization, love the community, uh, have made roots here. Um, so there's value to that. Um, our jobs are to put, you know, the organization on the best footing, and that can include those veteran guys as, as Coach um, implements his program. It's going to be a culture of hard work. They all have leadership qualities, mentorship capability, and, uh, you know, we're happy to have them and, and continue to, you know, help our team grow. In the event things come up, um, as I told you guys, Danny and I told you in uh, – in our availability with Rudy or anything else, that conversations, everything's so fluid in the NBA. So, um, but the team as it is right now, we've got a great open gym going on. Those, a lot of those veterans are here right now uh, and all along with our new players. And there's just this really good vibe and excitement in the gym. Um, I personally am really, really excited. I know Danny is too about this direction. And, and there are lots of situations where it includes them as well. Obviously, guys are used to winning and want to win at a high level. And now, knowing that looks like going in the rebuilding phase, do you get a sense from them that they're willing to, if there, if no opportunities for trades come up, that they're willing to stay here and lead, like you're saying, even though it's not necessarily a high winning situation anymore? I think all three, you know, all of the veteran guys, and including some of the guys that we've acquired, have really enjoyed being here. Um, I think they really like the city, the state, the organization, what Coach Hardy's bringing uh, with his staff. And so, you know, it's, it's a really good work environment. It's a really good place to come to work and with people that they know they're cared about and valued and that, and that they care about us too. So those conversations continue to evolve. We've, we've continued to be in touch with them directly, their representation. Obviously, there's been a lot of change this summer, so it's natural for us to have those conversations, but uh, there's nothing definitive in the NBA. 12 months is an eternity in the NBA. Uh, so we'll go on this journey together. And, uh, but they've enjoyed being here and I've enjoyed having them here. You, you do have 17 guaranteed contracts, I believe, on, on the roster now. So um, something has to change between now and, and cut day. Uh, do you, how do attack the trade market So, I mean, yes, your math is good, Andy. <laughs> we have 17 contracts. Right now we can have 20, 20 on our roster. At some point we're going to have to have 15, uh, not including two ways. So We're not trying to add more, though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we'll have those decisions to make up, and that will be in combination with our staff and, and coach. And then certainly, you know, there are always conversations going on with teams as they try to tweak things as the preseason gets started or other things. So. We'll see how it goes, but obviously those are some decisions that are coming up here in a few weeks. Yeah, you made the comment a moment ago that with a group of players who didn't believe in each other, the team that had playoff stars, and clearly those stars kind of ate away at them. Just big picture, what's the difference between teams that take playoff stars and bring bond together to like be able to get through them and that don't? Like, What have you seen in the history of those two kind of different paths? Yeah, good question, um, Dave. I think that it's hard to know, like, the characteristics of, of the team. I mean, I think winning and confidence in one another and earning the trust and, and being reliable in one another. Um, obviously, this team had a lot of really good players. Um, and also, it's the competition. Um, 
you know, the competition is fierce and it's hard winning. It's hard winning playoff games. That's not an easy accomplishment. And so, um, but just believing that you're better than the teams you're playing, which, you know, we have a great respect for all the teams that we play. But so it just might be that we're just, the talent isn't there in their minds. It's not a, a lack of character. Like, I believe every one of these guys went into every game believing they were going to win. Uh, don't get me wrong on that. I'm just saying, like, when adversity hit, um, the resolve you can see in a team that has a true belief in um, having each other's back or a belief in one another where um, the team had, I, I, don't, I think individually they have resolve. I just don't believe that collectively they did. And so we'd see a lot of players trying to do it on their own um, as the belief in one another wasn't as great as, as teams I've been on and around have, uh, that I've seen. So um, they're certainly not the worst team. I'm just saying, like, I just didn't see that they thought that they were uh, what some of them might represent that were a championship caliber team. I'm not sure I was believing it by the end of the season. It, it appeared at one point that the plan was to build around Donovan um, moving forward. If that's true, uh, what changed to make him available for trade? So being made available or not is, is, is kind of like a I, – I go back and forth with all of you guys about that. It's, it's more just the, the conversations. I think – and this, these were all collective conversations that we've had with ownership, with coach, with our front office group. Um, you have these conversations and there's a return and you start balancing what um, you can acquire on the market in return for, you know, perennial all-star players. You know, we've traded two of them this, year, this summer that necessitates us to m make a decision for the organization that is hard. I mean, you've got really good players, but you also have a timeline you want to open up with a maximum window and you know people become free agents they have a chance but the return this summer when players have multiple years on their contracts you know you kind of make a, a collective decision of like well do you you know do this now and get on with it or do you you know hey not sure about the likelihood of being able to keep this core together for the next five to seven years, who knows, you know, because it's not in a team control that collectively we made the decision to, to get on with it and, and do these deals. How good is this talent for 2023 in your draft? We're going to see. I mean, we, we, we think it's yeah, better than yeah. this past year's draft, but I'm not sure how to rank it against historic drafts, but I think it's better than last year's draft. I think 24 is better than 23 even, but that's pretty premature to start judging 16 and 17 year olds. Let you know in about three months. But yeah, I mean, so it's, you'll, you'll see different reports on the quality of the draft. And, you know, when, when there's certain players historically, you know, those drafts always get blown up, but sometimes it's just the top player in the draft or the second player in the draft. But it's hard, it really is hard to judge that at this early day, stage. You clearly prioritize draft picks in 2027, 2028, 2029. For some of the fans, that may seem so far out not to worry about. How do those picks fit in your overall vision for building a team? So I think we have the most unprotected picks under control until 2029 in the league. What those picks represent is not necessarily, oh, you're going to keep them and just select them. It just opens up multiple opportunities of conversations combined with flexibility to, you know, acquire players or move them to speed up a process to, you know, slow it down. So just, I look at it as a lot of different cards that you have a chance to play and be involved in these conversations where if you didn't have these picks or you didn't have the flexibility that we will have in the future, you're just not simply part of any of those conversations, which we went through over the last couple of years of being, you know, asset poor and really capped out in terms of our talent. And, you know, by design, we wanted to give that group as, you know, multiple opportunities to try and go win it. Um, when it became apparent that there was a ceiling and an expiration date to that group, 
this is what you do so that you can be a part of those conversations um, no matter how you can. Now we can build a team with multiple ways. It's not just the draft. It's not just free agency. It's trades as well. Is there a model from previous franchises that have gone this route that shows you the best route, or are there pieces that you've learned from other franchises that have gone this route that you're pulling on from? Um, that's a good question, Dave. I think that it's there's a lot of ways to do it. There's not one way. There's not one model to follow. Um, a lot of franchises have had great success and failure by just losing and drafting and you know continuously. Um, that's not our intention. So I'm way too old for that personally. But um, I think that I think that um, yeah, we'll, we'll just being ready, just being opt opportunistic. When opportunities come, we have assets, like you said, for many years down the road. Yep. I think incumbent, Dave, I would just add on is that the ones that have gone through and opening up new championship windows, they've gotten a lot of decisions right. No matter what, whether it's a, a trade or not a trade or a, a draft pick, and you know the work is on us to get those decisions right. And, and to have some need. good fortune. Yeah, a little luck. There's been some draft analysts that said that as long as you're in the lottery for this coming draft, you're going to get a good player. Is that how you guys feel? Or is that, I know you said it's way too early to know for sure, but is that do you guys feel this similarly there that as long as you're somewhere in the lottery, you, can, you got a chance of getting a really good player? And certainly the higher the pick you have, the better chances of you have less people in front of you before you select. But I mean, the draft will show you that there are good players all through it. And so our job is to evaluate and know those players. And you know, as Danny said, a little luck and, and some good decisions, we'll find them. But certainly, you know. I mean, the Jazz are built on mid-range picks with Stockton and Malone and, and Donovan and Rudy, as an example. So those guys are late first rounder. I think Stockton was in his 20s, 19 or 20? 16. 16? Something like that. Okay, so middle of first round for Stockton. And then Carl was 13 or 12? 18. Okay, I'm just trying to thank you for reminding me. So, yeah, I think that the, you, you could build teams. I think Devin Booker was a 13th pick in the draft. I mean, you could go, out, go on down the line, but draft picks are always important. So what made the Cavaliers offer ultimately the one that was acceptable for Donovan? It was the best offer. Um, I think for them, they, they saw an opportunity to add to their team and open up a window with – with Donovan and a young uh, young group, I think they're going to be very good. And you know, you have to to get a, a good return. You have to give up something good as well. Um, they certainly gave up a lot, and um, meaningful for them. And it was a meaningful meaningful trade that we liked as well. Was it easy to decide to extend Sexton? Yeah, I mean, Colin is, is a proven player. I mean, you guys are going to get a chance to meet him tomorrow, I believe, and you're going to love him as a guy and a hard worker. Um, we wanted to, you know, at his age and his already current production, uh, the opportunity for him to be with us, you know, through this, this stage is, is really good and hopefully, you know, many years beyond. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't much of, a, much of a question. He was somebody that we wanted to, if we were going to, to make a deal that he needed to be in that deal. And then I guess, can I also ask you about the other two players you got in the deal? What do you guys think of? Yeah. Um, so first of all, in general, all three, and Danny you know, will have his comments too, but all three of these guys are, you guys are going to really enjoy working with and being they are all excited to be here. Um, they all have been very accomplished up into their stages of their careers. They're all still very young. You know, Larry Markin, and I, I don't know how much you guys have been following him in Eurobasket, but he's been absolutely great. Uh, he's shown a lot of versatility in Cleveland and a guy his size to be able to play multiple positions. He's very skilled. Um, you know, he's averaged 15 and, and 6 or 7, and he's still only 24. Um, so the confidence he's coming in with after, you know, doing what he's doing there, we're really excited to, to have him come be part of our program. Colin, um, maybe a little bit more known as far as his accomplishments the first four years of his career coming off an injury. Um, he's a completely healthy and um, 
you know, has a chance to continue to grow. He's only 22. And then Ochai Agbaji, you know, is the most outstanding player in the Final Four, another national title winner, has gotten better every single year, um, profiles really well athletically and his ability to shoot the ball. And his character and hard work, and his work ethic, I think will translate very, very well with, with Will in his first year here. Good players, David. <laughs> Talented, good players. Good question again, Dave. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> two for three. <laughs> <laughs> two for three. 